Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we are doing Illustrative Math, Grade 8, Unit 4, Lesson Number 14, Practice Problems. Okay, our first question here is just to solve. We know that y equals 6x, so what I'm going to do is substitute that into the y of the other equation. The other equation is 4x plus y, but we know y equals 6x, so I'm going to put 6x there, equals 7. Now, solving this equation, 4x plus 6x, well, that is 10. x equals 7. Now, what does x equal? To get the x by itself, I have to divide each side by 10. Those cancel x equals 7 tenths. Now, am I done? No way. I have to go back in and figure out what y is. Which means I have to substitute back into one of the original equations, x equals 7 tenths. This equation right here is already solved for y, so that's a good spot y equals 6 times x, which is 7 tenths. So y equals 6 times 7 is 42. 42 tenths. Um, both of those are even. 21 fifths. So, solution to a system of equations. Hey, look, my head's in the way. There, now you can see it, 21 fifths. Um, solution to a system of equations is um, a point. So we need an x value and a y value. Our x value is 7 tenths, and our y value is 21 fifths. Now, if we want to double check that, we plugged it into this first equation over here. Let's check it out with this lower equation. Um, 4 times 7 tenths is 2.8. And 21 fifths is 4.2. If we add 2.8 plus 4.2, that is 7. So this works. Okay, let's check our next one. Another solve the equation. We know y equals 3x. So I'm going to substitute that into the y spot of the other equation x equals negative 2 times y, which is 3x, plus 70. x equals negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x plus 70. We want all the x's on the same side. Right now, the left only has x's. The right has x's and numbers, so if we get rid of the x's on the right, we'll have x's on the left and numbers on the right. How do we get rid of subtracting 6x? We add 6x. Those will cancel. Do it to one side, do it to the other. 7x equals 70. This one should work out nicer than the last one. Divide each side by 7. x equals 10. Are we done? No, we're not. Just like before, we want to plug that back in and get a y value. y equals 3 times x, but x is 10. So y equals 30. Means we should have the point x value of 10, y value of 30. 
plug that back into our other equation that we have here, which is x equals negative 2y plus 70, x is 10, negative 2 times y is 30, plus 70, so 10 equals negative 2 times 30 is negative 60, plus 70, that checks out, 10 equals 10. I love it when I check my answer and it was right. Which equation, together with y equals negative 1.5x plus 3, makes a system with one solution? Okay, if we want to have our two equations have one solution, that means we need a different slope. This has a slope of negative 1.5x. If we just think about what this will look like, a y-intercept of 3, a slope of negative 1.5, it's going to look kind of like that. This one here, same slope, different y-intercept, that's going to be parallel. B, same slope, different y-intercept, that's going to be parallel. Um... This one right here, to make this look like y equals mx plus b, I want that y by itself. So I'm going to divide by 2, means I divide this side by 2. And I have y equals negative 3 over 2. Well, negative 3 over 2 is negative 1 and a half. I don't even care about what the b is. I know it's going to be either parallel or, actually, let's check this one because 6 divided by 2 is 3. So this equation is actually exactly the same as our original equation, which means it will have infinite solutions. D right here is going to, if we want this to look like y equals mx plus b, we've got to lose the 3x from this side, put it on the other side. Then I have 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. Hey, I just did that one. I just did that one. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Ooh, why didn't I just start out? Because we were talking about slope. This one has a different slope. This slope's negative 2. Different slope means they have to cross. Same slope as parallel. Different slope means they're going to cross somewhere. It's E. Okay, now what have we got? The system x minus 6y equals 4, and 3x subtract 18y equals 4 has no solution. Change one constant or coefficient to make a new system with one solution. So if I want there to be one solution, that means I want different slopes. Means I want a different number of x's. This one here right now, because this has no solution, if I want to make it have one solution, I need a different number of x's, or I need a different slope, which is always the coefficient of x when we look like y equals mx plus b. So change one constant or coefficient means I have to change the coefficient of x. How about instead of x minus 6y equals 4, I'm going to have it be 3x minus 6y equals 4. I change this number right there. Now they're going to cross. It's going to have one solution. Change one constant or coefficient to make a new system with an infinite number of solutions. 
infinite number of solutions means I want the exact same thing on both sides. Which means I want to change only one number. I want, I changed the first equation last time, so I'm going to change the second equation this time, which is 3x minus 18y equals 4. But if I change that to equals 12, and the other equation is already x minus 6y equals 4, I bet by changing that 4 into a 12, these are actually the exact same equation, which means same equation, same line, infinite solutions. I'm gonna move this up a little bit now that I've copied that down so my head's not in the way. Because if I look at this, if I divide this whole thing by three, divide that whole thing by three, divided each side by three, that means the new equation I get is going to be equivalent because everything I did was balanced. 3x divided by 3 is x. Negative 18 divided by 3 is negative 6y equals 12 divided by 3 is 4. Hey, these are both the same equation now. So by changing that to a 12, I now have an equation that's identical to the other one, infinite solutions. What have we got now? Ooh. Match each graph to its equation. Let me see how well I can do for fitting as much as possible on the screen so you can see it all. Okay, y equals 2x plus 3. Slope of 2, y-intercept of 3. That's positive, so it's going up. y-intercept at 3. A looks like the only line that's going up and has a y-intercept of 3. So little a goes with big A. B, negative 2x plus 3. So it's going down, and we have a y-intercept of positive 3. y-intercept of positive 3 going down, that's C. y equals 2x subtract 3. So slope of 2 going up, because that's positive. y-intercept of negative 3. That looks like here, y-intercept of negative 3 and going up. Which means d probably goes with d, but let's double check. Slope is negative 2, it's going down. y-intercept is negative 3. Perfect. Now, what is next? Here are two points. What is the slope of the line between them? Negative 3, 4, and 1, 7. We can use our slope formula. We can think about where these are going to be. Negative 3, 4 is here-ish. 1, 7 is here-ish. Looks like it's going to be going up. Yep, all those are positive. Our rise... Well, we went from 4 to 7. 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 3. Our run, we went from negative 3 to 1. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 4. Slope is 3 fourths. So that looks like B to me. Excellent. This has been a, another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.